Hi, I'm going to show you clearly and factually that the current uh, massive shortage of infant formula, baby formula in the United States is not due to contamination at the manufacturing plant, but due to an error by the FDA, and now the FDA is trying to cover it up. So first, Let's just see what uh, CBS News has to say about it. Look, this is part of a larger problem that stems initially from this plant in Michigan that had to shut <clears> down <throat> over contaminated formula that ultimately killed two infants. Okay, so two infants uh, uh, drank formula from the Abbott um, uh, baby formula plant in uh, Sturgis, uh, Michigan, and they died. They died of Cronobacter, and there was also two infected with Salmonella. But here's the problem. I'm going to go through from the FDA's website, the FDA's inspection report from the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, and show you that it's not true. It's absolutely just not true. So here we go. The FDA says, at this time, the CDC has completed laboratory testing for two clinical samples received related to, the, related to this investigation. Analysis did not find these samples from patients to be a genetic match to the multiple strains of Cronobacter found in the environmental samples obtained from the Abbott Nutrition Sturgis uh, Michigan facility. Okay, so let me just explain this very quickly. You know that to make a baby, you have a, 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 a man and a woman, they each uh, donate 50% of the DNA for that baby. So each, because a man and woman might have different parts of their DNA, different genes that get donated to each baby, each child has different characteristics. But that's not what happens with bacteria. And we're talking about Cronobacter, which used to be known as Enterobacter. It's a bacteria that grows in the, in, in the intestinal tract of people. And um, what happens when bacteria reproduces is, it's only one cell. It's not from two different people like a human being. It's only from one cell. And the DNA of that one cell gets, gets duplicated, and then the cell breaks apart and makes two cells. And now a million, a billion bacteria that come from that, they're all, they all have identically the same DNA as that one bacteria that it started with. But here's the thing. So you have the one bacteria and then a million made, another million made, and 10 million made, but maybe one of these now gets a genetic defect. It gets a mutation. Now every one of the millions of bacteria that come from that one, they're gonna all have that mutation in them. So they're gonna be different than the original bacteria because of the one mutation. So using genetic testing, you can tell even among the same bacteria, which strains are, are different from each other. And what the CDC web website shows, and what the FDA shows and Abbott shows is, yes, Cronobacter was found in the, in the Abbott facility that makes baby formula. But the species of the, of the Cronobacter found in the Abbott facility is not the same as the species of Cronobacter that was found in the two children that got sick and died. Not only that, the species of the Cronobacter in each of the two children were different from each other. So there is no way whatsoever that the Cronobacter infection of these two children came from the Sturgis, Michigan Abbott facility. And now I'm going to show details of this, again, going from FDA's website and CDC's website. So again, I just told you that um, here in the FDA's website, it said that the CDC found that there was no genetic match between the bacteria that infected those two children and the one found at the Sturgis, Michigan Abbott facility. I'm gonna move on. Now this is from the FDA website. You can go to it at fda.gov and you can read the documents about the Abbott recall and the shutdown of the Abbott plant, which is now caused, potentially is going to cause many infants to potentially die heaven forbid, because they can't get the formula that they've been on. They might have to try to change formulas, but the parents can't get the formulas. They give them milk. They're not going to be tolerant to milk. Uh, it's a disaster. So what it says on the FDA website is, importantly, no distributed product, that means none of the product that was actually sent out of that manufacturing plant, no distributed product has tested positive for the presence of either of these bacteria. 
Abbott con conducts extensive quality checks on each batch of infant formula, including microbi microbiological analysis prior to release. That means they test for the bacteria that may or may not be in each batch, and they test Abbott tests before it's released. All finished products are tested for Chronobacter uh, Sakazaki, which is the one that killed those two children, uh, Salmonella, which is the other two reports of infections with Salmonella, um, and other pathogens, and they must test negative before any product is released. So before those batches get released to the public, they're tested and they don't have the bacteria in it. So now you start to wonder, why did FDA shut down those facilities causing a catastrophe. And I'm also going to show you how FDA is trying to use concealed double talk in order to cover up what's really going on. By the way, how do I know these things? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, my name is Rich Roberts. I'm a medical doctor. I'm also a doctor of biophysics, educated and trained at Penn and Harvard. I was also the president and CEO of a pharmaceutical company. And for 24 years, I did battle with FDA. And by the way, why is Abbott not coming out more strongly against FDA on this? From my experience, I'm not, I've not spoken to anybody at Abbott. I, don't, I wouldn't even know who to speak to. Um, in my experience, FDA has a stranglehold on drug companies. Because if a drug company who spends millions and millions or even billions of dollars on research and development, if FDA decides to stop giving approvals, then that drug company can, can just goes down and down and can even go out of business. So FDA has a stranglehold on giving new drug approvals. And if you talk back to FDA, they might just... Uh, cut off your, um, this, I'm, this, I'm not making this up. This is what they do. They stop giving you drug approvals. With each batch of drug, that, of drug, or in this case, infant formula that's made, there's something called a retained sample. Samples are taken from the batch and not from one part of the batch. They're generally taken from different parts of the batch because the batch could be, you know, we made tablets and capsules. Uh, at our peak, we were making about 2.4 billion tablets and capsules a year. So you're going to take samples from different parts of the batch throughout it and they're put in bottles uh, and your quality assurance department makes sure that they're, it's all done securely and they're kept under controlled temperature and humidity conditions. So now that FDA says, oh, you know, these two kids got a Cronobacter infection, two others got Salmonella and they all ate from, this, from, the, from infant formula from the same plant. So uh, let's go look at the retention samples, as samples retained from each batch. Well... Again, FDA's own words, FDA's website. Additionally, retained samples related to the three complaints over Chronobacter Sakazaki tested negative for Chronobacter Sakazaki. So the FDA, the, the samples, there's no, there's no Chronobacter Sakazaki in the retained samples of the other product that was, that was shipped out that they shut the uh, Abbott plant down over. And also, there was salmonella in two of the reports, right? And the retained sample related to the complaint for salmonella Newport tested negative for salmonella Newport. Not only did, it did the sample test negative for salmonella from the manufacturing plant, the FDA did not find any salmonella anywhere in the entire plant. So here goes FDA's investigation into where the, the Chronobacter came from. And this is now from Abbott's website. Abbott says, genetic sequencing, again, looking at the DNA of the bacteria, on the two available samples from ill infants, so the two infants that got ill from Chronobacter, do, do, bio, do, do uh, sam sampling on, on samples that come from those infants, did not match the strains of Chronobacter Sakazaki found in our plant. So FDA did find some Chronobacter Sakazaki in the Abbott plant, but was in areas that don't come, come in contact with the manufactured product. And as you're going to see later, Chronobacter is all over the place. I'm going to show that to you. It's all over the place. Um, so samples from, all, from, the, from ill infants did not match each other. So wherever the Chronobacter came from that infected the two infants, they came from different sources. The two infants are sick, were made sick, and I think both of them died from Chronobacter that didn't even come, not only did they not come from the Abbott manufacturing plant, they didn't even come from the same source. And now the Abbott plant is shut down 
and 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 mothers and fathers across this country are terrified that they can't get formula for their infants that need it desperately, which is going to lead to FDA's further statements. And I'm going to show you who FDA is trying to cover it up. So now FDA writes, in all four cases, the state FDA and or CDC tested samples of the Abbott of the Abbott formula that was used by the child. In all four cases, all unopened containers tested negative. So right, you got it. So FDA, CDC, or the state went to the, the families of the, the children that got sick, and they had they had each of them had a container that was open that they're using for formula. They had some backup containers. The backup containers had no Cronobacter in them. Now, how about the open containers? Right, each family had an open container they're using to scoop out and and to dilute up and 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 uh, make into the bottles for the babies. Open containers from the homes of the infants were also tested in three of the four cases. Two of the three tested negative. The one positive was from an open container from the home of the infant, and it tested positive for two different strains of Chronobacter Sakazaki, one of which matched the strain that caused the patient's infection, and the other matched a strain found in, in a bottle of distilled water in the home used to mix the formula. Again, neither strain, ma neither strain matched strains found in our plant. I'm sorry, that was Abbott's statement. So we kind of know how these children got sick. The distilled water one of the families used in order to dilute up the powder to make the formula, that was contaminated with Chronobacter. And, and there's another strain of Chronobacter got in there somehow. And I'll show you later how. It's all over the place, Chronobacter. All right, going on further. The Chronobacter Sakazaki that was found in environmental testing during the investigation was in non-product contact areas. Could have been in an office, could have been in the bathroom, an area where there was no contact with the product, and has not been linked to any known infant illness. So you're telling me that the press is telling you that babies died from, from uh, drinking formula from this, this Abbott plant, and that's why the plants were shut down, causing a nationwide crisis, and it's not true. So now from the journal uh, Biocontrol Science, here's a study from 2016 from Japan, and here's what they found. 12% of vegetables grown in fields and 13% of vegetables grown hydroponically had Corona Sakazaki on it. And 44% of samples that they tested of shredded vegetables had Corona, Corona uh, no, sorry, not Corona, Chronobacter Sakazaki. By the way, Corona and, and, uh, and Chrono, meaning coronavirus, Chronobacter have nothing to do with each other. One's a virus, the other bacteria, it's the naming regimen, nothing to do with each other. So sorry about that stumbling, but that's, that's something important to know. So then why did FDA shut down the manufacturing plant causing this disaster? When FDA inspectors go in to inspect a manufacturing plant, pharmaceutical manufacturing plant, they write up a list on something called a four, FDA Form 483. This is the one that, the, this is the inspection result report that came from FDA's inspection of this Abbott plant. Now, they call them observations. They call them um, observation one, observation two. FDA doesn't even say that they're violations because they're always trying to cover themselves. They have an observation. They may, not, they may stop giving the company drug approvals and try to strangle the company or kill the company from that, but FDA just calls them observations without passing judgment. FDA says, you did not establish a system of process controls covering all stages of processing that was designed to ensure that infant formula does not become adulterated due to the presence of microorganisms in the formula or in the processing environment. So they say, you did not establish, I'm gonna read it again, you did not establish a system of process controls covering all stages of processing. This is what FDA does. FDA, we used to come into our facility and they might look through 500, the records from 500 batches and each batch, let's say, has 100 measurements on the hardness of the tablets. 
and in those 500 batches across across 50,000 measurements of hardness, they might find one in 50,000. The hardness from the tablet should be went up just a little bit outside where it should have been goes back down again. And we can show experiments that it doesn't cause any harm, it's not a problem. So one in 50,000 was a little high. FDA writes, you do not have procedures to ensure that your production stays within the manufacturing standards approved by FDA. That's how FDA speaks. One little error, and then they come, they slaughter a company. The second thing that FDA says on their website when they're giving a synopsis of the inspection is that Abbott did not ensure that all surfaces that contact infant formula were maintained to protect infant formula from being contaminated from any source. You hear this little tricky. They, FDA is not saying there was contamination on the equipment that actually made the product for infants. They said that Abbott did not ensure that all surfaces that contact infant formula were maintained to make sure there's no, no contamination. So FDA is shutting down the plant because FDA doesn't like the level of assurance that the, that the company performed to make sure the product does not come in contact with Cronobacter or some other microorganism. They're not saying they found microorganism there. They said, FDA is saying they don't like the level of assurance. Now, if we go into the FDA report, you find out that how does FDA know about these cases where there wasn't an assurance of the product, that the product was not contaminated? It's because of Abbott's own quality controls where they, they have a record of where, for example, a contractor didn't uh, put boots, paper boots, over their shoes when they walked into the, con into the product area. And the contractor was caught by Abbott. They were, they were, they were reprimanded on that. Um, and, and Abbott recorded, this was a violation. This should not have happened. We're gonna try to make sure it doesn't happen again. And then FDA goes into a company that's trying to do the right thing by policing itself and keeping a record of any kind of excursion. And FDA goes right to that and says, aha, I caught you. Well, you caught the company trying to self-correct. That's like the best thing you could see. And you shut down the company because of things like this? When there's no contamination in the product? And you've got the press hammering, saying people, children died from it? If the children died from this, it's going to be because FDA stopped the production in the facility. And by the way, as soon as the heat started coming down on FDA, because on the, on the administration, the, uh, the Biden administration because of this, all of a sudden FDA decided, okay, you know what? It's okay for the plant to start running up, start running again. But there's a big catch to this. This is part of the FDA cover-up. So if this plant can't give assurances of the quality of their product, it can't prevent um, the, the product from being contaminated, so then obviously they can't make product, right? Wrong. This is from FDA's website. The agency's intention, F agency means FDA, intention to temporarily exercise enforcement discretion. That means um, like if you're speeding and the cop stops you, he has discretion whether to give you a ticket or to let you go. So FDA is saying that it's the, it's the FDA, the agency's intention to temporarily exercise enforcement discretion. So FDA is not going to enforce the regulations on the company on a case-by-case -case basis for certain requirements that apply to infant formula. This action is designed to increase infant formula supplies in the United States while protecting the health of infants for whom infant formula is often the sole source of nutrition during a critical period of growth and development. Now... FDA is saving the day? How is this infant formula going to protect the health of infants if it's contaminated with chronobacter and the company can't assure that it's not contaminated with chronobacter? How? Because it was never contaminated in the first place. FDA messed up. By the way, it's not the first time. I don't want to go into I'll get maybe another video. I'll give you the whole history of FDA, of my battles with FDA, how they were wrong so many times. But uh, there's a famous case decades ago 
where FDA tested grapes coming in from South America. And FDA found cyanide in, the, in some of the grapes. FDA halted all those, all those imports of grapes from South America. In South America, there are farmers that committed suicide because they were driven into economic ruin. And then later, FDA said, oops, it was FDA's mistake. It was a mistake in FDA's laboratory. There was no cyanide. This stuff gets covered over. But this is FDA's mistake. This is the catastrophe going on. So listen to this statement showing how FDA is coming to the rescue. Again, from FDA's own website. And the date on it is May 16th. It says that, they, they, that the FDA has something called CORE, C-O-R-E, the CORE Network. That's a group at FDA that's working with the CDC and, other, and Centers for Disease Control and, um, and others. And they're investigating consumer complaints of illnesses among infants who were, re, who, were re, who were reported to have consumed powdered infant formula products from Abbott's Nutrition's Sturgis, Michigan facility. And they say, although CORE is no longer investigating this incident, the FDA continues, is, is continuing to work, uh, continues, continues to work on, on supply chain and food safety issues. Oh, oh, great. FDA is working on the, the supply chain to get infant formula out there. Although the group investigating the, inf the, the contamination by bacteria are no longer looking at it. Why are they no longer looking at it? Because there was no contamination. Genetic testing proved that. Testing of samples of, of the, at the facility proved that. That's not what you would get from this statement, though. Who you think, oh, FDA is to the rescue. No, sorry, FDA. So what does FDA now say? The FDA is advising consumers not to use recalled Similac, Alimentum, or L-Care powdered infant formulas. So FDA can't admit their mistake. Oh, don't use those recalled, don't use those recalled batches. <laughs> but... They weren't contaminated. And FDA said, oh, but still don't use them. But there's a massive shortage in the country. And FDA messed up. FDA can't admit their mistake. It's a big lesson in life, by the way. If you make a mistake, say, I made a mistake. I'm sorry, I'll correct it. I just have to give you a brief explanation of validation in the pharmaceutical industry. I don't mean like, I know validating your feelings, that's something else, a different realm. Actually, it could be Maybe the validation is sort of some of the same idea, but this is the pharmaceutical industry. When you make a, let's say we manufacture tablets and capsules. When you make a batch of a million tablets, you can't test every tablet. Because when you test a tablet, you destroy it. You dissolve it in a beaker, you do chemical testing on it. So what you do is you're going you're gonna to test, let's say, 100 tablets out of a batch of a million. The tablets are taken at different stages throughout the manufacturing process. So you try to hit different places, but you're only testing a hundred tablets out of the out of the million. Now let's say there's ten bad tablets in there. That means one out of every hundred thousand tablets is bad. So you're only you're only testing like one in, in ten thousand tablets. It's not likely you're gonna pick up errors in one in a hundred thousand tablets. By the way, I don't know if you can hear that grinding sound. We have construction going on in the house. Sorry about that. So when you're testing the finished product, it's very likely you're not going to pick up defects. So what you have to do is, when you get, after you get approval to, manufacturing a, to manufacture a product, you need to do three validation batches. That's three regular batches of the product, but you test hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of samples. And when it's a powder and the blend, and, and when, when the tablets are made, you test all across the whole process so that you make sure that this is a reproducible, robust process. That the truth is, you really don't have to test the finished product after that, because you know the process is so strong, it will just make rely product reliably batch after batch. We still do some testing, but you rely on the validation. You can't trust the testing of batches in, in order to release product. We still do it, but that's not what you trust. You trust the validation. So FDA is right in a sense that they're saying that some of the observations they made in the Abbott facility are repeat observations. A previous 
in a previous inspection, FDA found some water on, you know, in a, in a dryer or whatever it was. I go back and look at exactly what it was. And they found some repeat observations. So FDA is saying we can't really be assured that this is a validated reproducible process. But and so then FDA goes to close down the plant on that. Not because there's contamination in the product. There was no contamination in the product. But because FDA can't assure that the, the process is... reproducible to make sure there's no contamination. However, now that there's political heat on the president, on the, on the administration and on the FDA, because the FDA now may cause infants to die from switching formulas or switching to milk based on FDA's errant shutdown of this plant. Because, and by the way, you say, F, you know, um, Abbott voluntarily recalled. There was a voluntary recall because FDA threatens them. If you don't voluntarily recall it, we're gonna to go to court and the court is gonna to listen to FDA because courts trust the, the, the regulatory agencies and we're gonna shut you down and then, you, and then we might press criminal charges and now but, and co pharmaceutical companies just say, you know, forget it, we'll just recall. So it's a voluntary recall with a gun put to your head, a voluntary recall. But anyway, so FDA, by FDA standards, you cannot release product uh, just based on the final testing of it. it has to be the validation that the validation is good and FDA is saying the validation isn't good for the, these these Abbott products but now FDA is under such pressure what's happening FDA is now allowing Abbott to go back into production and start releasing product again just based on final testing FDA says well we'll do more testing than what's normally done on each batch that's released that's what I'm going to read to you baloney FDA is trying to cover themselves. Well, we're going to make them do more testing than they would have to do otherwise. FDA knows you can't trust that final testing. It's the reproducibility of the product as demonstrated through validation. So here you go. From Abbott. Abbott says, Abbott conducts micro microbiological testing on products prior to distribution. And no Abbott formula distributed to consumers tested positive for Chronobacter, Sakazaki, or Salmonella. But as we know, you have, to, you have to trust the validation of the process. But now FDA says, is from FDA's website, following the voluntary recall and hold of certain powdered infant formula products produced at the Abbott Nutrition Facility in Sturgis, Michigan, Abbott has committed to completing enhanced testing of stored product batches prior to rele making release determinations. Oh. So FDA is concerned over the conditions that would make the process not validated or not under what's called CGMP, is current good manufacturing processes, but not so concerned that with additional testing, they can't be released. But by FDA standards, additional testing doesn't give you the comfort to release it. FDA is just trying to cover themselves. While the FDA recognizes that, that Abbott has conducted standard product testing, there were a limited number of samples tested. Well, you're testing the retained samples, the samples of the batches that were released that you have retained. And you're not testing validation numbers of samples. You do that on validation batches. You don't do that on production batches. Additionally, although finished product testing does not eliminate the risk of contamination. Uh, you see that? Testing the finished product does not eliminate the risk of contamination because it's the validation of the first three batches where you test hundreds or thousands of samples. That's what gives you that assurance. Additionally, although finished product testing does not eliminate the risk of contamination, the enhanced testing will provide for a greater chance to detect Chronobacter Sakazaki. If present, however, this, is, this enhanced level of testing will take additional time. Okay. I don't even have to tell you why that's ridiculous, hypocritical, not scientifically valid according to FDA regulations. FDA is under pressure and where they say you have to depend on the validation, they're now saying we don't have to depend on validation. Why? Because FDA messed up. 
because FDA has caused a major shortage of infant formula in the United States based on an infection in two children or four children from bacteria that did not come from the from the formula plant. Let's go on. FDA says, Abbott has confirmed, has confirmed with the FDA that the company will, consi will consider release of these products on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on product availability and severity of the individual's need. Oh, so if you really need the formula for your baby, uh, then you could, you could get it. But it's based on case-by-case -case testing. But the case-by-case -case testing that was done by Abbott showed there was no infection, no contamination anyway. And FDA, if they're challenging the validation, well, that hasn't changed yet. So this is just FDA doublespeak, trying to cover over the fact that FDA made an error in causing this nationwide infant formula shortage. So what's the response to this? Here's Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He's a medical doctor. He's on the board of Pfizer and he used to be the head of FDA. He's telling you now what the, what, the, what the problem is. You told me there are only nine people who oversee the entire baby formula industry in this country. Nine? That's right. And I think there, I think there were, I believe there were three when I started at FDA. We got some more resources for that group. There's been more resources added since then. And there's a budget request from the current administration to add four more people. But yeah, only nine people right now oversee, oversee the entire industry in the United States. And it was less than that just several years ago. That's astounding. Oh boy, that's horrible. When Scott Gottlieb ran FDA, there were only three people overseeing the entire baby formula industry, manufacturing industry in the United States. Of course, there are very few manufacturers, which is the problem. It's like four or five manufacturers that make up almost all the baby formula production. But boy, there are only three. Now there's nine. Well, that's great. Then now there's nine, but he's saying we need more. Okay, so now this is the FDA Form 483. This is the actual inspection report from FDA of the um, Abbott manufacturing plant. You see at the top here, it, it tells that it was uh, an inspection done from January 31st until March 18th. That means the FDA inspectors just planted themselves there uh, for um, you know six weeks, whatever it is, and. Um, it's the infant formula manufacturing plant. You see that. Now we'll go to the bottom of the page and let's count the number of inspectors that were at this plant. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve FDA inspectors there. Scott Gottlieb just told you there's only nine people overseeing the, the um, baby formula manufacturing industry. So what's going on? Is it nine or is it 12? And here's what's going on. There's FDA headquarters just outside of Washington, DC. And then there's FDA district offices all around the country. The people in headquarters don't inspect manufacturing plants. It's the people in the district offices all around the country that do the inspections. So what I want to know is what the heck do you need nine people for in headquarters when they don't do the majority of the work and there aren't that many companies to oversee. The work is done, the vast majority of the work is done by the inspectors in the local facilities. They're the ones that plant themselves, not to use a pun, but plant themselves in the manufacturing plants for six weeks or eight weeks or three months or whatever it is going through all the records, records after records after records, digging, sampling. Those are the ones that do all the work. Look, I can't read Scott Gottlieb's mind, and I've found him to be a tremendous, uh, um, a tremendously reliable source of information on, on uh, the COVID-19 outbreak. But in this case, in my experience, this is very typical of a government agency. You, you need to know that the number one priority of government agencies of people who work in government agencies is to protect their own jobs. They always want to get more money for their agency so they can hire more people in, give them, make themselves more important, give themselves a bigger domain. Uh, Scott Gottlieb, again, I'm not, I can't tell you why He's, he tells you how few people there are at headquarters overseeing 
these these manufacturing plants. But as an ex, as a uh, what's typical for a guy who who led FDA and typical for someone who used to be high up in FDA and left and still needs to have good relations with FDA so that they can get access to all the information for, for the jobs they're doing now, whether they're in, the, in regulatory affairs or they're in the press or whatever it is, they need to be like, like they are still, still beating the drum for the agency. So when he says you need more people at FDA, um, isn't exactly the opposite? Now look what this congressman, Look at this, look at this report. Again, CBS News. And look what this congressman says. The bill is passed. House lawmakers approved two bills Wednesday night. One would provide $28 million to the Food and Drug Administration to prevent future formula shortages. This bill just continues the Democrat strategy of throwing money at the same bureaucrats who caused the crisis. Oh, so FDA messed this up. FDA closed this plant claiming that there's bacterial infection killing babies. It turns out there is no bacterial infection in the products. There's no bacterial uh, contamination in the areas of the plant that actually make the product. This chronobacter is found all over the place on fresh vegetables. It's in, the, it's in your sinks. It's on your countertops. It's all over the place. Genetic testing shows the babies who got sick from Cronobacter did not get it from the manufacturing plant of the formula. And actually, each one got it from different sources that are as of yet unknown. And FDA is trying to cover it up by saying, oh, now they're focused on trying to get the, get, get the supply back after they killed the supply. And now the ex-bureaucrat wants to give more money to FDA. And this congressman quite correctly is saying, you're going to reward the agency? that created this disaster and made this problem? This is unbelievable, folks. I wanna make one last point. Look at this clip about the commissioner of FDA. And President Biden has evoked the Defense Production Act to boost domestic supplies. Nicole Killian is on Capitol Hill with more. Nicole, good morning. Hey, good morning to you, Vlad and Anne-Marie. FDA Commissioner Robert Caleb says that he is acutely concerned about the safety and availability of baby formula. Oh. So the commissioner is maximally focused on getting the supply of baby formula up and running again. Duh. He oversaw the agency that caused the catastrophe. And he's trying, he's not, not, FDA is not owning up to their error. You know, they put it on their website, but it, they're not telling the press about it. The press, most of the press, they don't bother to actually do the work. Uh, read the FDA on the FDA website about what FDA did here. They just report, oh, babies died from the plant. Well, they didn't. They didn't, excuse me. And the commissioner is working hard to get the, well, yeah, the commissioner should be working hard to try to get the supply back because he should, and he should be filling the heat because his job should be on the line. And getting more money for FDA? Uh, is that how you punish or, or, or reprimand an agency for creating a catastrophe unnecessarily? You give them more money? That's government for you. So in conclusion, first of all, obviously, I'm not telling anybody to do, take any, any medical action. I'm not telling anybody to use or don't use any formula. I'm just giving you the facts, which you should go and independently check. It's right there on FDA's website and the CDC's website. But yes, this commissioner of FDA, he should be concerned, very concerned about increasing the supply because it's his agency that caused this catastrophe unnecessarily. And, and to reward them, for, to reward FDA with more money for erroneously causing this catastrophe, that's just, that's your government, that's your tax dollars at work. Um, I think that FDA should be penalized for causing this catastrophe. Thank you. I just want you to know um, if uh, you wanna donate to me or whatever, there's no way to donate. I don't monetize my channel. I don't, um, I don't, there's no way to contribute. I don't sell merchandise. I'm just trying to be helpful to people to tell them the truth and things that I have experience in. Be well.